I'm DC Moons, head coach for Honor Guards Fencing Club. This video is designed specifically to prepare fencers for practice and for tournaments. So, stay with us. Here we go. The first thing that you should make certain before you begin any kind of exercise, and especially for fencing, is to get enough oxygen into your lungs, into your bloodstream, and into your muscles. Many people don't bother thinking about their breathing. The first deep breathing exercises you should do, they'll help to calm you down as well as to prepare you in your blood chemistry to execute a lot of vigorous activity with your muscles. Think about filling up the space in your lower back. When you take deep breaths, keep your shoulders down. Don't breathe like this. Just let your lungs fill. Think of pulling the air in through your nose and all the way down to your lower back. Lift your head up a little and take one long deep breath. And let it out gently through your mouth and your nose. Take another long deep breath. Think about the air getting into your lungs. Think about the oxygen getting into your bloodstream. Take one long deep breath. You should be able to feel the back of your throat getting cooler. You can feel the air getting into your lungs and you can feel the oxygen getting to your brain. The first actual exercise you need to do is something very simple, but it helps you establish your balance and it helps getting the larger muscle groups in your body working. That's what's going to make your heart start pumping more and start moving the blood around in your body a lot better. All you need to do is lift your knees one at a time. Pick your knee all the way up, waist level. Let your weight shift from side to side. Keep your balance, don't fall over. Don't have to do this fast. You haven't warmed up and stretched out your muscles yet. So don't take a chance on getting injured. Four or five, six times each side. Then, to start using the muscles in your stomach, your rectus abdominis muscles, start taking the elbow from one side, reaching over and crossing, and touching the knee on the other side. Keep your hands and your arms up and out. That gets your shoulder muscles, the deltoids, involved. You want to try and get every muscle in your body just to work. You don't want to work fast at this point. You just want to get things going. You just want to raise your blood pressure and raise your internal temperature. You shouldn't have to do that particular exercise more than 10 or 12 times to get some benefit from it. Remember, if you're going into a fencing practice and especially into a tournament or competition, you don't want to burn up all your energy just warming up. This isn't a race. This is just preparation. Then. Getting the, the muscles in your feet and in the part of your calf, the rear of your calf, is the gastrocnemius muscle. That provides a lot of power finishing your lunge. Simply spread your feet apart at about 45 degree angles and raise your heels off the ground, hold it for a couple of seconds, and ease back down. This also makes you think about where your balance is. Where's your center of gravity, front to back? The previous exercise worked left to right. Again, you don't have to go fast here. You should go slow just to get the flexibility in your feet and get the power in the gastrocnemius muscles. Feel them. Feel them warming up. You can then do this releve exercise, as the ballet dancers call it, from one foot to the other. But get all the way out to your toes. Get your heels off the ground. Get the lower part of your legs working nice and strong. Then, once the thigh muscles and the hamstring or biceps femoris muscle on the back of your leg have been worked out a little in these series of exercises, then you want to start getting everything in your lower back, your rectus abdominis, your legs, and the gluteus maximus, the muscles on your backside. Get those working. When you start jogging a little, you can jog in place, you can run back and forth, you can run up and down the strip. At this point, you're just getting your rhythm. Remember, breathe in on two steps, out on two steps. Keep the oxygen flowing in. Otherwise, you're not doing yourself any good. You're just getting tired. This kind of exercise, any vigorous exercise, will build up carbon dioxide and lactic acid in your muscles. So, don't make this your primary exercise. I'll be doing another video focusing on strength, on building your level of power, 
that'll make you a stronger and faster athlete. A few seconds of jogging, get your arms into it, but if you're actually running, you want to make certain that your arms don't take over. You don't want to twist your upper body. You don't want your hands to drop or flop back and forth. If you're actually jogging, think of keeping your hands at elbow level and they only move front to back. This keeps your upper body from getting too tired. At this point, you're not building strength. This isn't conditioning. This is just to warm up for fencing. After you've jogged a little bit and your back and your stomach are warmed up, you want to get your upper body, the muscles in your chest, the pectoralis muscle, the deltoids, the splenius capitus in the back of your head, and the trapezius muscles on the sides of your neck. You want to start getting that worked up. That's easy enough to do with turning your torso. Think of rotating your shoulders 180 degrees from right to left. Just a little bit of a twist. Don't make it fast. Just feel as your spine. Imagine it a, a chain, a series of links. You want to stretch that chain out. You want to imagine taking the top of your head and pulling it high to the ceiling if you can. Almost get your heels off the ground. Keep your spine long and rotate. Once you feel your lower back warmed up properly, once you can feel the muscles in your back causing you to rotate and your spine has loosened up, then you start getting your arms, your triceps, your biceps, your deltoids. Get those functioning with punching left to right as you twist, much like a boxer rotates their upper body when they throw a hard punch. You want to get your upper body rotating. It's very important here to take a long reach with your arm. Long reach so that the muscles in your back are the, lat the latissimus dorsi. They get stretched when you punch forward and they get tensed when you pull your arm back. You want full rotation. You can bend your knees a little bit and move up and down. This keeps the blood flowing through your legs. You want to get everything moving. You want to get everything warmed up. Take a steady stance. Reach your arms out to the side. Now you're not going to twist. You're just going to circle your arms. This gets the juncture of your arms, your spine, and your shoulders fully warmed up. Take them to the front and then to the back. Four, five, six circles. That's all you need. You don't need to do it fast and you don't need to make them great big reaching circles. You just need to make it, say, the size of your fencing mask out to the sides. At this point, you really want to start to get the point, the juncture of the tendons to the bone. Doctors call it the insertion. You want to start to get the blood flowing into the smaller tissues. There are very small blood vessels that run through your arms, through your muscles, and through your tendons. Take one hand, push it into the other. Push with this hand and pull with this one. Move the hands further away from your body and pull them back in. This arm in pushing is working the triceps muscle. This arm in pulling is working the biceps. Work them back and forth three or four times. This is called an isometric exercise. Reverse your hands. Use the opposite muscles on the same arms. Pull it in and out. You can vary it, pushing it off to the side, taking it up overhead. This starts to increase your range of motion. You start to get the joint of your shoulder fully flexed and rotated. Then, a part that many people forget, you use your hands, at least your weapon hand, I'm right-handed. You want to get your forearm, your wrist, and the muscles in your hands working. Flex your hands in, stretch your fingers out, turn them over, flex and stretch, flex and stretch. You can do this while doing the arm circles, and then you're forcing yourself to coordinate all of this in your head. Flex your wrists back and forth, roll your wrists around. These exercises only need to be done three or four or five times. You just want to feel everything warming up. You want to feel everything getting loose. <clears throat> then, of course, standard exercise that everybody learns in junior high school, jumping jacks. 
What's the purpose of doing jumping jacks? This is something to make the outer portion of your leg, these muscles, the extensor muscles, get those working and get your arms working and coordinate everything. Up at the same time you go out, down when you come in. Five, six, eight, ten jumping jacks, doesn't need more than that. That's all you need to do to just warm the whole system up. After that, there's a slightly more complex exercise where you're going to actually spread your feet, bend forward, and you're going to rotate your body, shoulder up, shoulder up, spread your arms out. Don't do this too fast. You get a lot of momentum, you put a real hard twist in your lower back. The last thing you want to do is injure the muscles or the cartilage in between your vertebra, your discs, when you're just warming up and getting ready to fence. When doing this exercise, make sure your feet are spread wide enough apart so that you're stable and you don't fall on your face. Aside from injuring yourself, you look dumb. You don't want people to laugh at you. They won't take you seriously. And you're harder to beat. A lot of people forget that when you add the weight of a fencing mass, you're increasing the mass of your head. Your neck muscles have to control that extra mass. It's a good idea to warm up the neck muscles with a series of rolls and twists. When you do this, don't tighten, shove your neck over. Think of having a tennis ball between your neck and your shoulder. Lay your head over slowly and then let it roll forward. Let it roll off to the side and let it come back. You don't need to go for maximum flexibility here. This is just slightly stretching out the muscles and warming them up, getting ready to put on the mask and deal with the extra weight of it. As you're moving quickly up and down the strip, the weight of the mask can take over. You need to have strong neck muscles, kind of like a racing driver who has to fight not only the G-forces on his head, but the added G-forces of the weight of their racing helmet. Not just rolling your head around, Think of the axis of your neck doing this in a circle. You should also do a simple side flex because the trapezius muscle here is the one that really has the most effect. It's the one that also undergoes the greatest strain. It's the one that's most important to warm up. A lot of people turn their head a lot to make head fakes when they're fencing. So do a little rotation. You don't have to try and get your chin all the way around and look behind you. You're just turning your head to get the blood flowing and get the fluids moving in the vertebra. In between the vertebra are those discs. You want to get all of that warmed up, stretched out. Turn your head and roll it down. It only takes a few just to kind of get the kinks out. Get it moving just a little bit. And again, don't do these exercises quickly. When you try to do something fast and your muscles aren't warmed up, that's when you start to damage the internal tissue of the muscle at the molecular level. A strain, or as it's commonly called, a pulled muscle, happens when you try to do something too quickly before you're really warmed up and prepared for it. After doing these neck rolls and your back and your shoulders and everything are pretty warmed up, then you need to get the muscles of your chest and your triceps. Those need to be strengthened and warmed up, and you really get your blood pressure moving by doing good old-fashioned push-ups. People don't understand that push-ups have a technique to them, just like any other exercise. I'll show you the way I learned it in the military. Your hands should be only as wide apart as your shoulders, and your feet should be stretched out behind you. Lay down first. Put your thumbs right underneath your shoulder sockets. If your hands are out too far or too far forward, you're doing the push-up incorrectly, you're not gaining any benefit from it, and you might hurt yourself. Hands down, fingertips forward, come all the way up. This is the starting position for a push-up. You don't start on the ground. And you should have a nice long straight line from your shoulders through your hips all the way to your heels. When you go down, your chin, your chest, and your belt buckle touch the ground at the same time. Breathe in, 
Breathe out. I don't need to do more than five. If you're 10 years old, only do five. If you're 20 years old, do 20. If you're 50 years old, do two or three. The next exercise is kind of a whole body exercise. Combining on guard action, advanced retreat, and warming you up to do lunges. You got everything else pretty much in gear. Now it's time to really get the legs involved. The French word plie means to bend. Ballet dancers do a lot of knee bends. This is an action that, this exercise is an action that takes lateral and vertical motion. I think of them as lateral plies. Don't do them with your feet parallel. Do them with your feet turned out the same way you fence. Bend both knees and shift to one side. Up, and then shift to the other side. Come all the way up. Let the foot leave the ground. This is second position in ballet. Get your feet up. Drive yourself all the way off the ground. If you can get your heel off the ground too, that helps a lot. Keep your hands out. Helps you maintain your balance. The deeper you can go, the more you're getting the biceps femoris, the gluteus maximus and the quadriceps involved. You gotta get these leg muscles really pumping. Gotta get ready to get on guard. Gotta get ready to lunge. A few of those each side is usually just enough. Get the feeling, get the balance, get ready to go. Final exercise really involves a lot of vigorous motion with the legs, front of the legs, back of the legs, and your buttocks. This is an action that will force you to keep your balance while warming up the legs and getting your blood flowing really strong. Forward and backward kicks. Kick your front leg forward, back, front, back, front, back. You're going to have to maintain your balance. Turn your feet out. You might want to do a front kick on one leg, back kick on the other leg. See how high you can get your foot. To do the front kick, stay straight up. To do the back kick, lean forward a little. It's a good idea. Get your foot on the ground in between. Re-establish your balance. You keep your arms out to the side. Helps you balance even better. Don't snap your leg too hard. Don't want to pull a muscle when you're just getting ready to fence. These don't have to be too high or too vigorous, but you want to get everything involved. You can also, almost like a martial arts motion, lean your body to one side and kick to the other side. This now gets the hip joint nice and lubed up, so to speak, warmed up. Because obviously when you get on guard and you lunge, there's a considerable amount of motion in the hips. Don't want to find these little hip flexor uh, ligaments getting too tense or too tight, too early. So these side kicks help get all of that loosened up. Make sure to get your leg all the way out. Discover the full range of motion. This whole series of exercises should be enough to just get you warmed up, just get you rolling. At this point, you gear up. I wouldn't recommend doing all these exercises in your full fencing jacket. It gets a little too warm. At this point, gear up, find somebody to get on the strip with, and practice a few touches before the ref calls you to start your bouts in your pool. Remember, this is good to warm up. It's good to get yourself in touch with your balance. Feel the warmth of your muscles. Feel your blood flowing. Get yourself sweating a little bit. Just enough to get you awake. Just enough to get you ready. Just enough to make sure that everybody watching realizes you're serious about fencing well that day.